Hello everybody, this is Hauser here, and I'm back with something new. Um, in this video, I'm going to attempt to start up a new series, a reading series in fact. Uh, I may have told you before, or new viewers, I probably haven't told you this anyway, but I am one huge anime or manga fan. I mean, I'm fucking crazy on it. I like drawing it, making it, and soon eventually I might be animating it. But one thing I have to do in my spare time is also read it. Um, this is something called a graphic novel. Um, it's like a flip through, read through sort of comic, which is quite good because it like it, you'll see when you get into it. It's also one of those stories um, where you also get choices, and the choices affect the ending as well. But also, these choices mainly dictate of um, how the story goes. Um, I haven't told you the title of the goddamn thing. <laughs> Well, this particular one I'm looking at right now, uh, well, what you're looking at, um, is one of my favourites. Um, this is Katwa Shou I think it's pronounced. Um, man, me being an anime addict, I've read it so many times. But the more I read it, the more I love it, pretty much. So, uh, basically, it's about um, this guy who suffers a very bad condition which ends up screwing up his life. So... Um, he ends up having to start all over again in a fresh start around new people. And um, what this novel is mainly about is the choices that you make can affect what... I mean, very little choices can affect what will happen. And those choices affect of um, these five girls, in fact. So, yeah. Oh, uh, just another thing. This novel contains adult fucking content. When it comes to actually seeing it, though, there's a chance I might... Uh, be s disabling it or attempting to like read it but have a picture of puppies on or something I don't know but uh, that's like way way in the story anyway so we won't have to worry about that for a moment um, for like the perverts I might put links in the description for the time when it comes to be absolutely uplo uploaded but yeah uh, I'm waffling on right now uh, alright then without further ado let's get started Stop. I'll read you my awesome narrator voice. A light breeze courses the naked branches overhead to rattle like wooden wind chimes. This is a popular retreat for couples in the summer. The dictator's trees provide a beautiful green canopy far out of sight of teachers and fellow students. But now, in the late winter, it feels like I'm standing under a pound of kindling. I breathe into my cupped hands and rub them together furiously to prevent them from numbing in this cold. Just how long am I expected to wait out here anyway? I'm sure the note said 4pm. Uh, this is pretty much the main character, Heisau I think it's pronounced. Um, he's pretty much the main guy of the entire story and when you see his name pop up he's obviously saying it. It's like um, he's pretty much like Spider-Man where he narrates his entire story pretty much but yeah, pretty much. Uh, yeah, let's get to it. Ah, yes, the note. Slipped in between the pages of my math book while I wasn't looking. As far as cliches go, I'm more of a fan of a letter in a locker. But at least this way shows a bit of initiative. As I ponder the meaning of a note, the snowfall gradually thickens. The snowflakes silently falling from a white painted sky are the only sign of time passing in this strange winter world. Standard world. My English ain't that good, I can tell you that. Uh, first load to... Uh, uh, fucking hell. You, this is a good example. Uh, the slow descent upon the frozen forest makes it seem like time has slowed to a crawl. The rustling of dry snow underfoot startles me, interrupting the quiet mood. Son is approaching me from behind. Hey, hey Sal? You came? A hesitating, barely audible question. However, I recognise the owner of that dainty voice instantly. I feel my heart skip a beat. It's a voice I've listened to hundreds of times, but never as more than an eavesdrop but never more as an eavesdropper to a conversation. I turn to face this voice, the voice of my dreams, and my heart begins to race. I got my note telling me 
to wait here. It was yours? Damn it, I spent all afternoon trying to come up with a good line and that was the result. Pathetic. Um, yes, I asked my friend to give you that note. I'm so glad he got it. A shy, joyous smile that makes me so tense I couldn't even move a single muscle even if I tried. My heart is pounding now, as if we're trying to burst out from my chest and claim this girl for itself. Ah, so, here we are, out in the cold. Once again, the wind stirs up the branches and no... I don't know that word. I'll probably Google it later. Noises, music to my ears. Iwanko flinches over so softly against a gust of wind. As it passes, she writes herself, as if supported by some f new confidence. Her eyes lock with mine, and she lazy twirls her long, dark hair around her finger. All the while, the anxious beat of my heart grows louder. My throat is tight. I doubt I even could force out a word if I tried. You see, I wanted to know. If you go out of me, ah. Uh... She fancies you, mate. I stand there, motionless, save for my pounding heart. I want to say something in reply, but my vocal cords feel like they've been stretched beyond the breaking point. Hey, Sal. I reach up to try to massage my throat, but this only sends spikes of blinding pain along my arms. Hey, Sal. I'm not going to scream, I can tell you that. My whole body freezes, save for my eyes which brute open in terror. There's a... <laughs> no, I'm not screaming that. Fuck that. The beating in my chest suddenly stops, and I go weak at the knees. The world around me, a, the canopy of bare branches, the dull winter sky, Iwanako running towards me, always fade to black. The last things I remember before slipping away are the sounds of Iwanako screaming for help and the incest clatter of the branches above. And there we have it. It's been four months since my heart attack. In that, oh shit, this is the long paragraphs. Beware long paragraphs. In that whole time, I could probably count the times I left this hospital room unsupervised on one hand. Four months is a pretty long time when you're left alone with your thoughts. So I've had plenty of time to come to terms with my situation. Arrhythmia. I think that's how it's pronounced. Arrhythmia. Arrhythmia. <laughs> A strange word, agreed. A foreign one, alien one. One that you didn't want to be in the same room with. A rare condition, it causes the heart to act irregularly and occasionally beat way too fast. It can be fatal. Apparently I've had it for a long time. They said it was a miracle that I was even able to go so long without anything happening. Is that really a miracle? I guess it was supposed to make me feel better. More appreciative of my life. It really didn't do anything to cheer me up. My parents, I think, were a bit were hit harder by the news than I was. They practically had two 
hemorrhages apiece. Excuse me, I nearly burped there. Ugh. I'm not sure you want to hear the sound of me burping down the mic, do you? <laughs> I had already had a f full day then to digest everything. To them, it was all fresh. They were even willing to sell our house in order to pay for a cure. Of course, there isn't a cure. Oh no. Because of this, the late discovery of this condition, I've had to stay in the hospital to recuperate from the treatments. When I was first admitted, it felt as if I were missed. For about a week, my room in the ward was filled uh, full of flowers, balloons and cards. But the visitors soon uh, dewildered. Dewildered? Uh, and all get well gifts began trickling down to nothing shortly after. I realised that the only reason I'd gotten so many cards and flowers was just because sending me their sympathy had been turned into a class project. Maybe some people were generally concerned. I doubt that. Even in the beginning, I had barely, vis I had barely visitors. By the end of the first month, only my parents came on a regular basis. Iwanako was the last to stop visiting. After six weeks, I never saw her again. We never had that much to talk about when she visited anyway. We didn't touch the subject that was between us on that snowy day ever again. The hospital? It's not really a place I like to live in. The doctors and nurses feel so impersonal and faceless. I guess it's because they were in a hurry and they have a million other patients waiting for them. But it makes me feel uncomfortable. For the first month or so, I asked the head cardiologist every time I saw him for a rough estimate of when I'll be able to leave. He never answered anything in a straightforward way, but he told me to wait and see if the treatment and surgeries worked. So I idly observed the scar that those surgeries I've left on my chest slowly change its appearance over time. Thinking of it as some kind of home. I asked the head cardiologist about leaving, but my accept expectations are low enough now that I'm not disappointed anymore when I don't get a reply. The way he stuffs around the answer stuffles around the answer shows that there's at least some hope. At at some point I stopped watching TV. I don't know why, I just did. Maybe it was the wrong kind of ep there's so many fucking complicated words in this. The kind of escapism, I think. Uh, for my situation. I started reading instead. There was a small library in, at the hospital, although it was more like a storeroom for books. I began working my way through it, one small stack at a time. After consuming them, I'll go back for more. I found that I liked reading, and I think I became a bit of addicted. I started feeling naked without a book in my hands. But I loved the stories. That was what my life was like. The days became increasingly harder to distinguish from them, each other. Differing only by the book I was reading and the weather outside. It felt like time blurred into some kind of gooey mass I was trapped inside. Instead of moving within. A week could probably go by without me even noticing it. Sometimes I pause in realisation that I don't know what day of the week it was. But other times all things that surrounded me would painfully crash into my co consciousness. So through the barrier of inoculants I had to set up for myself. The pages of my book would start to feel sharp and burning hot and the heaviness of my chest would become so hard to bear that I put the book aside and just lay down for a while, looking at the ceiling as if I was going to cry. But that happened only rarely. And I couldn't even cry. You fucking sad bastard. <laughs> uh, today the doctor comes and gives me, comes in and gives me a smile. He seems excited, but not very. What's the point of that then? It's like he's trying to make an effort to be happy on my behalf. My parents are here. It's been a few days since I last seen them. Both of them are even in sort of dressed up. Is this supposed to be some kind of special occasion? It's not a party. There is this ritual that the head cardiologist has. He takes his time, sorting his papers, then setting them aside as if it would take some point of pointlessness. Point to point to point to point to pointlessness. 
of what he just did. Then he casually sits down on the edge of the bed next to mine. He looks me in the eye for a moment. Hello, hey Sal. How are you today? I don't even answer him, but I smile a little back at him. I believe you can go home. Your heart is stronger now. And with some pre precautions, you should be fine. We have all your medications sorted out. So I'll give your father a prescription. The doctor hands a sheet of paper to my dad. Those expressions turns wooden as he reads it quickly. So many. I take it from his hand and take a look for myself. Feeling numb. How am I supposed to react to this? The absurdly long list of medications staring back at me from the paper seems unsuited and memorable. <laughs> Another word. They all blend together in a set sea of letters. That's a lot of fucking letters. This is insane. Agreed. Side effects, adverse effects, conditions, dosages are listed line after line with a cold precision. I try to read them, but it's so futile. I can't understand any of it. Attempting to only makes me feel sicker. All of this for the rest of my life, every day. I'm afraid that's the best we can do at this point. However, new medications are always being developed, so I wouldn't be surprised to see that less fade over the years. Years? What kind of confidence booster is that? I'd felt better if he hadn't said anything at all. So I've spoken to your parents about we believe that it would be best if you didn't return to your old school. What? Please calm down here, Sal. Listen to what your doctor is trying to say. Calm down? The way he says it tells me he um, knew full well that I didn't, wouldn't like it then. Am I able to be homeschooled? Whatever my concern shows is ignored. We all understand that your education is paramount. However, I don't think that's wise for you to be without supervision. At least not until we're sure that your medication is suitable. So I've spoken to your parents about a transfer. There's a school called Yak Yakimo Academy that specializes in dealing with disabled students. Disabled? Wait, am I? It has a 24 hour nursing staff and it only has a few minutes it's only a few minutes away from a highly um, regarded general hospital. The majority of students live on the campus. Think of, it of as, uh, think of it as a boarding school of sorts. It's designed to give students a degree of independence while keeping help nearby. Independence? It's a school for disabled kids. Don't try to disguise that fact. If it was really that free, there wouldn't be a 24 hour nursing staff and you wouldn't make the hospital being nearby at a selling point. Of course, that's if you want to go. But your mother and I aren't really able to homeschool you. We went out there and had a look a couple weeks back. I think you'll like it. It looks like I really don't have a choice. Compared to other heart problems, people with your condition usually tend to live long lives. You'll need a job one day and this is a good opportunity to continue your education. This isn't an opportunity. Don't call it an opportunity. Don't call it a goddamned opportunity. <laughs> God damn it. Calm down. Well, you should be excited at the chance to go back to school. Who the fuck wouldn't? Bloody hell. I, re I remember you wanted to return to school. Did I? Did he? Oh. And while it's not the same one. A special school. That's an insult. That is what I want to say. It's a step down. It's not what you think. All the students there are pretty active in their own sort of way. It's geared towards students that can still get around and learn, but just need a little help in one way or another. Your father's right. And many of the graduates of school have gone to do amazing things. A person doesn't have to be held back by their disability. One of our colleagues in another hospital is a graduate. I don't care. <laughs> a person doesn't have to be held back by a disability. That's what a disability is. I really hate that something is so important was decided for me. But what can I do about it? A normal life is out of the question now. <laughs> it's funny. I, ha I had always thought my life was actually kind of boring. But now I miss it. I want to protest. 
I want to blame for this lack of reaction on shock or fatigue. I could only easily yell out something now, something about how I can go back to school anyway. But no. I don't say anything. The fact is that I know it's futile. I look around the room, feeling very tired of all this. The hospital, the doctors, my condition, everything. I don't see everything, anything that would make me feel any different. There isn't really a choice, I know this, but the thought of going to a disabled school, what are those even like? As much as I try to put a positive on this, it's very difficult. But let me try. A clean slate isn't a bad thing. That's all I can think of to get me through this. At least I still have something even if it's a special school, it's something. It's a fresh start, and my life isn't over. It would be a mistake to resign myself to thinking that. At the very least, I try to see what my new life will look like. Alright guys, we're going to end it there. Um, in the next video, I'll explain um, how um, I'm going to do this series, because it's going to be quite complicated. But um, I'm going to end it here. Uh, right. Like and comment on the video and subscribe if you haven't already. If you have like any ideas for games or things that in fact to read, because that's a new thing, um, please put them in the comments down below. Uh, if you're obviously a new person, then press that subscribe button because I post stuff that's awesome. Yeah. Um, but yeah, anyway guys, thank you for watching.